On today's show, a Lake Superior adventure in one of America's prettiest places. Flash, flash, flash! Turns out it's one of the birdiest spots, too. There's wolves. Flush, presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Peasants Forever. Minnesota's dog days of summer never last forever. Lake Superior's tourism towns dry up as temps drop, especially Grand Marais, where the October view looks like this. We won't go hungry. Phil Veith and his son Paul covet Lake Superior getaways, exactly why the family built a cabin. About two miles from here, my cell phone does not work. I get zero service. Then I come in the driveway and I see the cabin, you know, the outline of it. And I'm like, I'm here. Enjoy every minute you have here. Hard not to. When this curious truck lumbers down Veet Lane. When this one pulls up, all you, that's Scott Sorensen right there. Is this grouse camp? Hey guys! This is my backyard, yeah, I love it. Love where I live. A love of life outdoors brought Scott and Paul together way back. And we've known each other since college. You know, he's like another brother, really. <laughs> Clearly adopted. Hey, how are you? But we'll save that for another day. After all, we showed up to hunt. Okay, one, two, I need like six or seven. <laughs> No pheasants up here, so I take the dogs out for walks every day and there's grouse up here, and so I just kind of got into chasing grouse. They're awesome. I think I'm ready. We might as well uh, hit the backyard. 10 years later is the first time we've actually hunted right <laughs> out of the cabin. <laughs> Hunt them up. Yep. Literally 50 steps behind the cabin hides a Lake Superior gem. Superior hiking trail runs from Duluth all the way up to Canadian border. There's spur trails off of that all over the county up here and, and it's all public land. You don't have to ask permission to get on and, and hunt. You did lose leaves. Yes, they all dropped, uh, I don't know, 10 days ago. To be able to walk the trail and find a little cover like that and say, let's just go try it. That doesn't happen all the time. Neither does this. Yeah, watch Ike, he's on something over there, I think. A moment all hunters cover. Easy, easy. Oh, here's a bird right here, here's a bird, here's a bird. Flush, flush, flush! In the grouse woods, you know, the flushes are like, um, you know, they're out and down and up and out, and it's like, you know, you're one foot on a log and looking up. Oh yeah, I see him. I saw it fly, and then I don't know if I heard a shot then, and... Oh, that looks like a point. Is it under there? Dead bird. Dead bird. <laughs> there you go. Hey, 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 good boy, Zeus. Bring it here. What do you got? What do you got, huh? All right. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it was it was awesome because Ike had him on a hard point. Yeah, not not too bad, huh? Right out the back door, public land. Before this day ends, this trip will earn a nickname. The title of this hunt has to be under promise, <laughs> over deliver. <laughs> The Flush is brought to you by Federal Premium Ammunition, North Dakota Tourism, Waltons, Benelli, and by Nutrisource. This segment of The Flush is brought to you by North Dakota Tourism. Start your journey at NorthDakotaLegendary.com. Lake Superior, an absolute freshwater giant. But we visit Minnesota's North Shore more for the woods than the water. Here's a bird right here. Flush, flush, flush! When you're going into an unknown and you see a bird within 15, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, I mean, it just puts a little hop in your step. Right out behind Paul Veith's family cabin. Right on. First rough grouse comes to hand. Right in the backyard, yes. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when you get days like this in October, you, you cherish it. Move up on them if you can, Paul. Scott Sorensen guides grouse out of the town of Grand Marais. If you like the outdoors, it's great. Boundary waters, canoe area in the backyard, you know, million acre of wilderness. It's awesome. We walk Minnesota's Superior Hiking Trail. Find them up, find it, find it. Where we look for any birdie looking habitat. There's thick, dense cover with a little bit of moisture in it and alder brush. Hey, Bill, Ike's on one here. Yeah, Ike's really working this log here. <laughs> Somewhere right here. Oh, there he is! Coming your way, Paul! Okay, he's back down. Here, no word. Can't blame Paul for missing a few. Hunter with a bad wing. He had fallen playing hockey and blew his rotator cuff up. Needed some shoulder repair, like bad. It's pretty lengthy uh, recovery and PT and, and you know, not even halfway there yet. He thought, hey, I'll try shooting left-handed. Which, <laughs> it was a little bit of an adventure. You, you know, you gotta close an eye now, and you, you know, I'm, I'm checking the safety, you know, pretty much every, you know, 30 seconds. I was thankful to get, get a few cracks at some grouse, and pretty sure I wasn't even close to them. A challenge, to say the least. Seems to be a theme on this hunt. Ike, 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 Ike! Right, Ike? I think the grouse woods is, makes him happy. Ike, a seven-year-old bohemian wire-haired griffon, a hunting dog with quite a story to share. I just wanna take care of him and, you know, as long as he's having fun, you know, we'll go hunt. Ike's story means a quick detour to farm country. Kirk Dilly first brought Ike to the U.S. from the Czech Republic. Kirk wanted a hunting dog. A bohemian wire-haired pointing griffon. He hoped Ike might share his bird hunting passion. Sure looked that way Ike's first year. One night, the dogs went out for a quick run. Kirk found Ike back on the steps. And as I walked by him, he kind of fell into me. And I thought, what in the world? And, and I realized he'd hurt his leg. And I thought, oh, he broke his leg. And then all of a sudden, you see a hole in his back right next to his spine. He has no feeling in his leg. And you're thinking, oh my word. Kirk remembered seeing a buck deer in the yard. 
But I think Ike may have either stumbled on him and they just were there right away, or he may have went after him. And I think that buck kind of just pinned him to the ground with those, the horns and that antler hit his spine and it knocked out all the sensation to his leg. Ike struggled nine months with a lame rear leg. This promising hunter now looked lost. I never got him over that hump of really getting to where he was really mobile and, and, and not in, appeared not, not in pain and so on. Vets eventually took Ike's leg. The surgery also broke hearts. I just kept postponing, what am I gonna do with this dog? But I finally came to the conclusion we had to do something. Who knew Ike's story could take more winding and certainly unforeseen turns? He was covered in blood and he'd been attacked. And they had photos of a, of a lone juvenile wolf. The Flush is brought to you by Ruffland Performance Kennels. Big Timber Fasteners, Sage and Breaker, DeWalt, and by Aluma Trailers. Pheasants Forever remains committed to protecting and restoring wildlife habitat. Join Pheasants Forever today and you'll help us to create more habitat, cleaner water, and abundant wildlife. Your $35 will make a difference today that will last forever. Some days, some moments. Come on, Zeus. I don't know. They just stick. Oh. Oh. Same can be said about the dogs we hunt. All right. Good. Pretty. We got him. Yeah. You've always been my favorite. You know that. To hunt with a dog like Ike, it just changes you a little bit. Especially when you think back to Ike's younger days. Ike lost his hind leg to a buck deer attack. His owner, Kirk Dilly, hit a wall. I just kept postponing, what am I gonna do with this dog? But I finally came to the conclusion we had to do something. Kirk put Ike up for adoption on a rescue website. Guess who called first? And my wife um, subscribes to that, and uh, she approached me about Ike. So my profession is an occupational therapist. Anna Sorensen had an idea. So I kind of was like, oh boy, what did we get into here? I tried, you know, swimming with him and running, and the more he ran, the stronger the back and became. From there I was getting text updates every month or so with pictures of them sleeping with the dog, the kids playing with the dog, swimming with the dog, and, and, then that, and then I got a video. A grainy phone clip of Ike at full speed. The dog was running like the, he had four legs. I mean like a strong running dog. Ike found new life and new energy alongside Scott's other pointer, Zeus. A 10-year-old bohemian wire-haired griffon, just like Ike, the perfect hunting partner. We had him for a year, and Ike and Zeus got out of the porch. I got home at about 6 o'clock, and both dogs were gone. We jumped in two different cars and started driving around. The neighbors out for an ATV ride found him. He was covered in blood, and he'd, he'd, been, he'd been attacked. The vet prepped for the worst. I'm not positive they thought he was going to make it through the night. Neighbors had seen a predator around. The trail cameras captured proof. And they had photos of a, of a lone juvenile wolf. I wish he could tell us what, what happened, but we're, we're really thankful to have him back. That was then. He's working great. This is now. Yeah, he's birdie. 
He's got kind of a, quite a quite a story, but he's doing great. He's all healed up. And lots of birds still to find. I don't know. I didn't. Something's on the ground running. Yeah, it's a grouse. It's a grouse running. Right in front of you, Bill. Watch the dogs. There it went. An epic grouse hunt with both dogs and certainly friends. You know, similar sense of humor and similar interests. We make fun of each other and banter. Since we seem to be kind of replaying all the bird flushes and everything, so you missed that one, so it was flying really fast. Enough said. Tonight, we celebrate reunion. <laughs> well done, Paul. The amount of times we sat at that table and sipped beers and talked about life is, is more often than a lot of people that are close to me. Oh, man. Simple pleasures from simple acts. When you get up here, that's what you do. All just feels right in the world on this hunt. The Flush is brought to you by Chief Upland, Wells Lamont Gloves, Superior Pump, Southwire Tools and Equipment, and by Wing It. No doubt, a lake of superior views. But you know what? Sometimes turning your back to see the trees, <laughs> never know what you might just see. It's game time right now. Up. Put my game glasses on. Paul Veith and Scott Sorensen explore Minnesota's vast arrowhead, woods and water that border Canada. You know, there's a lifetime's worth of walking. Not in this spot. Burn up. It seemed like this season when we were going out, it was a bird a mile. I think we've screwed up his math a little bit. Everywhere we walk. Bird right there. There's a bird right there in the woods. Paul, there's a bird to our left running your way. Holy cow. Bird. Look out. Zeus, hunt him up. Here he comes. There he is. Bird up. <laughs> Get him? No, he flew right over my gun barrel. <laughs> I had to turn on him. Holy crud. They're so close. <laughs> you got a bird down? Nope. But darndest thing, we have one up. I honestly do not remember a time in my grouse hunting career where we have not put woodcock up. 100% grouse flushes. Zeus, whoa. Zeus, whoa. Zeus, whoa. Get up here, Paul. Let's go. Paul, go. Whoa. Zeus, whoa. When a moment that good happens and you're in the TV biz, it just happens. Yeah, technology. A dead battery, of course. We grab a new one and hunt. Pretty much every time we, we went through areas like that, we, were, we, moved some, we moved a bird or two. Oh, there he is. Towards you, Bill. OK, he's up in a tree here. The bird is in that tree. It's pretty fun though. <laughs> that's a shot I don't have, but it's a tough one. 
<laughs> Extremely tough. Super fun though. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Maybe we need a break from these darn birds. I have never seen Paul so heavy in my life. Kind of a wide guy right now. <laughs> I do a lot of uh, fly fish guiding up here. Rainbow trout lakes, brown trout, brook trout in the lakes. We go out in pontoon kick boats. Uh-oh! Yeah, they're willing to play. I'm on emotional overload. I'm getting pulled around. They're, they're beautiful. They, you know, they pull hard, they jump. Aww. More often than not, uh, the people that I'm out with, we're the only people on the lake. Got a bump? Oh, oh <laughs> got a jumper. There's a lifetime of water to, to fish. It's quite a natural resource. And all the while around us, in the silence of the North Woods, life goes on under watchful eyes. The lure of remote Lake Superior life. Grand Marais may not be America's biggest town, but it sure is one of the best. And if you ever show up, keep an eye out. Ike and Scott will be looking for you too. <laughs> yeah, if I'm not out hunting and fishing. Sometimes there's a sign on the door that's gone fishing.